Sixth grader killed and five others injured in Iowa school shooting. Four other students and an administrator were injured in the shooting at an Iowa school. The gunman, identified as a 17-year-old student, died from a self-inflicted gunshot, authorities said. What's up, everybody? Thanks for clicking this video. Thanks for tuning into my channel. My name's Simon Hill, black American from Louisiana, coming to you live from Budapest, Hungary. The reason I'm covering this story is because it's something that I care deeply about, something I truly believe that needs to be changed in the U.S., are the gun policies, gun laws, and gun culture of the U.S. that allows more innocent civilians to die every single year. We have close to 1,000 mass shootings that happen in the U.S. every single year, and a mass shooting is when four or more people are shot at one time. Around two of those happen per day, yet and still those stories go underreported, and that's why I created a whole playlist of me covering every single mass shooting that happened in the U.S. for about a good nine months, so go check out that playlist. I didn't do for clout didn't do it for money. Most of those videos are not monetized, but yet and still, this is something that we need to be talking about. And it's a shame that every single year, children have to be sacrificed to the God Americans worship, the gun. And we will continue to have stories like this. This is only the first mass shooting for this year, but it will not be the last. And every single year, we put these children up on the altar to be sacrificed for this sick, twisted idea, this belief that we have that owning weapons makes us American and free and safe and secure. Well, it absolutely does not. Stories like this don't happen in Budapest. They don't happen in Rome. They don't happen in Frankfurt. They don't happen in Madrid. All these places that America is 10 times better than when it comes comes to our wealth, our standard of living, yet and still we live under this sort of savagery every single year. And Americans think it's A-OK. -okay. It's not OK. I'm going to read this story. Uh, this was written by Remy Tuman, Victor Mather, and Leah McBride Menshig for the New York Times, published on January 4th, 2024, and updated the following day. A gunman killed a sixth grade student and injured five other people at a high school in Perry, Iowa, early Thursday morning, just as students were arriving back to school after their winter break. Four of the injured were students and one was an administrator. Mitch Mortavet, assistant director of the Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation, said at a news conference on Thursday, one of the injured victims was in critical condition. The administrator was identified by Easton Valley Community School District as Dan Marburger, the principal at Perry High School, where the shooting took place. Officials did not release the names of any other victims. The gunman, identified as Dylan Butler, a 17-year-old student at the high school died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Mr. Mortavet said, law enforcement officials believed he acted alone and said the motive for the attack was not yet known. In Perry, a town of 8,000 people about 40 miles northwest of Des Moines, the school the shooting sent parents rushing to schools, businesses, closing their doors early, and by evening, residents gathering for candlelight vigils. Absolutely sad, but the story remains the same. We see this happen day in, day out. Everybody sends their thoughts and prayers, yet and still nothing changes. Hundreds of people huddled in the cold at a park late Thursday where ministers led the group in prayer and residents shared their accounts of what had taken place that day. One high school student told the crowd that she heard the gunshots that morning and thought they were the sounds of balloons popping. Another speaker said she knew the student who had been killed, an amazing little boy, and he was the sweetest. Laura Espinoza, 38, an educator at Perry Elementary School, said that she knew Mr. Marburger, the principal principal who was shot. He was affable, friendly, and eager to get to know his students, she said. I feel like a lot of times you say the principal is this very serious authority figure, which he is, but he's also a person you can hear a joke from, she said. Or you could tell a joke, and he'll laugh about it. Miss Espinoza said that when the school went into lockdown that day, she went into panic mode, trying to protect her students while frantic about her own children's safety. Just don't imagine it'll happen to you, she he said, I feel like we got we go into these trainings ready to learn, but hoping that you'll never have to use that. This, it ain't that a shame? American teachers are trained to be prepared for mass shooting events at school. This is something now, instead of pressuring our politicians to change the gun laws or the gun policy, we just say, yep, let's send the kids to school with bulletproof backpacks. Let's make sure the teachers have taken the mass shooting training course because, you know, it's very likely that these underpaid workers are going to be killed in the line of duty of educating children. They're not police officers. They're 
not firemen, they're not soldiers, yet and still they have to be trained and ready for this. Every other country in the world would look at this as madness, and Americans say, oh, that's Tuesday. That's okay. Our kids get killed in schools. Our teachers have to take training courses on how to prepare for students that go po postal and ballistic. This is okay for Americans because nothing's more American than just owning the weapon, feeling that hard black metal phallus in between your hands. Yeah, going and popping it off at the range is more important than our children's lives. Even if you're a let's say, responsible gun owner. You spend hundreds of dollars, maybe thousands of dollars, accumulating weapons and ammunition. Where do you think that money goes? Do you think that money goes to helping people recover from mass shooting events or helping people uh, get over the trauma of being shot or losing a loved one to gun violence? No, it goes to the gun manufacturers who then pay lobbyists for the NRA to then go to Congress to advocate for more guns to be in the hands of more Americans and lower the standards for acquiring these weapons. So even if you are the person who's going to leave a long diatribe comment saying that guns don't kill people, people kill people, and all this sort of stuff, and say, oh, it's a mental health crisis. The mental health crisis in America is stupid Americans believing that guns will make us safer, or having these weapons in the streets or available for people will make us safer. It's absolutely not. You have the mental crisis, sir. You have the mental health crisis. In a country that doesn't guarantee universal health care for its people, in a country where having access to mental health facilities and psychiatrists and therapists and that sort of stuff is a luxury for only a select few of Americans, and Americans don't find that to be a problem, the mental health crisis is in you, thinking that it's A-OK -okay and this is normal, and we need to really consider the complexities of the gun problem in America. No, it's not a complex problem. We need to get rid of the guns in America. Abolish the Second Amendment, amend the Second Amendment, whatever. Whatever needs to be done to get guns out of the hands of stupid Americans who continue to see these things happen every single day, and they don't speak out about it. I'm going to continue here. The shooting unfolded just as the school day was beginning. The authorities said calls about someone with a gun at Perry High School began coming in just after 7.30 a.m., and emergency responders arrived about seven minutes later at the school. The attack took place before classes began. Mr. Morvet uh, said during a breakfast program that catered to students from multiple grades where the high school and middle school share a campus. So here is Iowa right here, and this is where the shooting happened in Perry, uh, a small town right outside of Des Moines. He said that when law enforcement officials arrived at the scene, they found multiple victims with gunshot wounds and students and faculty sheltering at place and running from the school. They also found a rudimentary improvised explosive, Mr. Mortvet said, and agents with the state fire marshal and Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives rendered the device safe. The gunman was armed with pump action, pardon, the gunman was armed with a pump action shotgun and a small caliber handgun, Mr. Mortvet said. He also made a number of social media posts in and around the time of the shooting, which law enforcement officials are investigating, Mr. Mortvet said. About 150 law enforcement officers responded to the scene, Mr. Mortvet said. Governor Kim Reynolds said at a news conference on Thursday that the shooting has shaken us to our core and recognized the incredible coordination of local, state, and federal agencies. Kim Reynolds, you can eat my penis. Anybody who is a elected official and all they have to say is that this shakes us to our core and our thoughts and prayers are with the family. You guys are the worst. You're absolutely the worst. You're working in tandem with the people who advocate for more guns to be in the hands of people or, or who try to obfuscate this issue. If you're an elected official and you hear about the next mass shooting, the next mass slaughter of children in our schools to the gun god that Americans worship and the next words out of your mouth aren't, let's get rid of the guns, let's abolish the the Second Amendment. Let's do something to actually change how guns proliferate in our society. Let's ban the NRA. Let's label them a terrorist group or something like that. If those aren't the next words out of your mouth, you are just as bad as the people who want to continue to see these slaughters happen, who want to continue ha letting Americans have access to weapons. You are just as bad as them, and you can eat my penis. going to continue here. Uh, the victims' uh, families need your thoughts and prayers. Oh, oh, I'm so, it gets me so frustrated seeing that. Your thoughts and prayers. I, I don't care if Kim Reynolds is a Democrat or a Republican. Thoughts and prayers gets me so hot under the collar. Just hearing that phrase gets me so mad that we allow our children to die and all we have for them are thoughts and prayers. Oh. 
The victims' families need your thoughts and prayers, as well as time and space to process and grieve, said Chief Eric Vaughn of the Perry Police Department, holding back tears. This community has been through tough times before, and we and have rallied together. I'm sure this time will be no different. As of Thursday afternoon, multiple parents... Oh, pardon. As of Thursday afternoon, multiple patients with gunshot wounds were being treated at Iowa Methodist Medical Center and Mercy One's uh, Des Moines Medical Center. Polk County Medical Coordination Center said in a statement, Ava Augustus, uh, a senior at Perry High School, told WHO 13 News that she was in her counselor's office when she heard three gunshots. When they got the all clear, she saw glass everywhere, blood on the floor, and a student who had been shot in the leg being taken out of the auditorium. Jody Kurth told KCCI 8 News, a local CBS affiliate, that her stepson, a student at Perry High School, was hurt in the shooting. She described the morning attack as an absolute nightmare. Her daughter texted her to let her know about the shooter, she said, calling it one of the worst moments of my entire life. Both of her children were safe, she told KCCI. At a community center in Perry, a bus dropped off students from the elementary school where parents waited for their children to arrive. One of the first parents was Amanda Woods, 34, a mother of two young sons. At first, I wasn't sure which school it was at, said Miss Woods, who had been listening to the police scanner to get more information on of the shooting. I was freaking out. The shooting added an extra layer of national attention to the small community of Perry, where about 8,000 people live. Media organizations were already in the area on Thursday to cover a scheduled campaign event by the Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy, who hosted a prayer circle just hours after the attack. Attendees expressed fear, but little surprise. God, please help our country, uh, Mr. Ramaswamy, uh, as he addressed the prayer event and shook hands with everyone, calling it a somber day. Okay, I don't think uh, Vishnu or Brahma is blessing America when guys like Ramaswamy are going to say, let's allow more people to have access to weapons. Yeah, let's not have concealed license permits or anything like that. Just let people carry the tools in their pockets. Let it happen. Because I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that that's Ramaswamy's policy. There is no national figure in the U.S. actually talking seriously about gun reform or actually getting guns out of the hands of Americans, which it should be. This is the way the world should be. That's the way America should be. We should be just like Germany in the sense that in Germany, they don't have their kids getting slaughtered at schools every single year. And the world looks on in horror. In France, they don't have their kids getting slaughtered in schools every single year. And the world looks on in horror. In Canada, they don't even do this. In Canada. But we can't even be like that. No. In America, you know what makes us big and bad? That long black metal phallus that all these Second Amendment defenders secretly worship. In their closets, they all have... AR-15s that are very oddly shaped and they bow down to them and, and secretly fillet them because that's more important, right? This God gun that allows our children to be slaughtered. That's what, that's what's more important to us. Oh, I'm going to continue here. Uh, Mr. Ramaswamy was in Iowa ahead of the state's Republican caucuses scheduled for January 15th. Corrine Jean-Pierre, the White House press secretary, said President Biden had been briefed on the shooting. Our students and teachers deserve to know that our schools are safe spaces and to focus on learning, not ducking coverage rails, she said at a briefing on Thursday. In a statement on social media, Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa called the appalling violence at Perry High School heartbreaking and thanked school and law enforcement officials for their quick response. Shelby Lehman came into Mr. Ramaswamy's event with her partner after picking up her first grade daughter from elementary school after hearing about the shooting at the high school. It's very scary having them walk your kid out with a gun and officer and having seven, eight cops there, Miss Lehman told Mr. Ramaswamy. Miss Lehman said it was hard to explain to her daughter why there were so many police and why she was picked up from school. She said she planned to try to explain things to her daughter later today as best she could. The Perry Community School District said the high school, middle school, and elementary school would be closed on Friday. But for America, this is business as usual. We're not closing down, baby. We're going to continue to let this happen, right? This is what being an American is all about. Having our children suffer at school and then having to explain to them, honey, you know, sometimes bad things happen in life. Your school might get shot up. There might be innocent people killed at 
churches and sporting events and music concerts. And, you know, this is just the nation we live in. We live in the freest, most prosperous nation, baby. And I just want you to know that I will sacrifice you to keep the Second Amendment. That's what most parents are end up will end up saying to their children. They will sacrifice the lives of their children to keep the Second Amendment. And I don't want to hear any excuses like, it would be impossible to get rid of the guns. Americans are obsessed with the guns. Anybody who says that is a P-U-S-S-Y. You are P-U-S-S-Y thinking that we can't go against the NRA. We can't go against these Second Amendment nuts. Anytime these people have tried to turn up on the government like they say they will with whenever somebody will try to take their guns, which is what they're secretly worried about. Whenever somebody tries to do something against their interests, they always end up losing. We beat their butts in the Civil War. We could do it again if we really wanted to. In Australia, they had a mass shooting, and what they, what they ended up doing was fighting those people, and they won in taking away their guns, and now Australia has some of the lowest gun crimes in the world. But in America, we are too P-U-S-S-Y to actually go against the people who threaten us. They say, you take our rights away, we will take your lives away. That's what these Second Amendment people say. Well, let them try, because we're sick and tired of seeing our children get slaughtered over this nonsense. But anybody, most people don't agree with me. Most Americans are too thick-headed to actually think that any of this is possible. Well, good thing I won't even be there. I'll keep my butt in Europe where I can be safe, my children can be safe, and I won't have to deal with stories like this. I have to have that fear that I'm picking up my child with a police officer right next to him or her saying that everything is now okay. My name's Simon Hill. Thank you for watching this. Peace.